feet. It's a nice, loose enough. I had to go out and buy an adapter. My, oh. phone, my phone doesn't have like a newer phone. Oh, it doesn't yeah. have the aux cord. Oh. So I went out and bought that yesterday just for this. It's all right. Well, that's okay. It's I had that. You probably sent me a message or something. Well, Caitlin has the same phone as Tim. That's what I said. Oh, I have the same brand. It's, it's it's a, well, no, but it's an iPhone. Oh, yours is an Android.
So welcome to St. Columbus, and we also welcome our friends at home who are not able to be with us this morning. Uh, we will be as inclusive as possible for both sets of folks and congregations. Um, a couple reminders before we begin. First of all, uh, Nancy is taking your picture so that we know who's sitting where and next to who, just in case. So uh, it's part of our return to worship uh, practices. So that way, if, there, if somebody becomes ill later on, we know who they were near. A reminder, even though it's Easter, please no singing out loud. Only Michelle gets to sing, because she has one of these. So um, you can sing in your heart. You can sing in your head. If you're at home, you can sing all you want. But please, no singing. That's part of the protocols, and that's probably the biggest spreader of uh, aerosols for this disease is through singing. Our St. Columbus service and bulletin can be found on the church website for those of you who are at home, www.stcolumbusca.com. So if you'd like to get a bulletin, we invite you to go to the website and do that. Our digital Zoom fellowship or coffee hour will continue uh, and, and be today from 10.30 to 11, so right after the service, so you can scurry home and jump on Zoom and talk with your friends. Also, be from 10.30 to 11.30 today, for those who are not able to be here in person, uh, we will have drive-through communion where you pull up in your car, just stay in your car, we'll bring communion to you. So that's another possibility for our friends who are at home. Communion, for those of you who are here, will be, uh, as we've done before, you'll just remain in your seats and I will come to you. You'll extend your arms out as far as you can and I will as well so we can keep some distance and we'll place the wafer in your hands. Next Sunday, we will be participating in the diocesan-wide service at 10 o'clock next week with Bishop Taylor and folks from the diocese. So we invite you to join in then. That will be on the website and on the Facebook page. And you can link up that way. So next Sunday at 10. And because we won't be together next week, a reminder that we are going to be having our restaurant fundraiser at Panda Express on Tuesday, April 13th. It's an all day thing from 10 in the morning till nine at night. You just uh, can follow the information that's in the bulletin or in the courier. Essentially, you uh, just need to tell them that you're there for the St. Columbus fundraiser. There's no flyer or anything that you have to have. Our music today is by Brett Hanley and Michelle Molador, and we're very glad to have them. Our video crew for you at home are Caitlin Larkin, Nancy Miller, Cliff Agan, and Tim Helton, and we thank them for all their work and for all our video folks and the work that they've done throughout Lent and Holy Week. And now let us gently sing together in our hearts and minds our opening hymn, Come Ye Thankful, Raise the Strength.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. lesson this morning is from the book of Acts. Peter preaches that through the death of Christ, God invites Gentiles into his kingdom. Listen now for the word of God. Peter began to speak to the Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. 
how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this morning is portions of Psalm 118. We will read this together in unison. Give thanks to the Lord. For the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This, this is the, the gate, gate of the Lord. Lord. Here, Here the righteous, righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our second lesson this morning comes from 1 Corinthians. Paul does not merely assert the resurrection, but cites eyewitnesses to the risen Christ, including the apostles, a group of 500 people, and Paul himself. Listen now for the word of God. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed unto you as of first importance what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, to you Lord Christ. Christ. Please stand as you are able. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. 
when she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It was still dark. The red streaks of morning were just starting to appear in the sky when Mary Magdalene stole out of the house and down the street. She couldn't sleep anyway, so she might as well go to the tomb and spend some quiet time there, some quiet time with him. She hadn't been able to visit since it happened. First, there was the terrible day itself, too unspeakable for words, and then it was the Sabbath and nothing could be done then. So now it was her first opportunity to try and make sense of things and to be sure that nothing else could happen to Jesus. She was just starting to round the bend into the garden and there it was, the tomb that should be sealed was gaping open. Dear God, what now? She sobbed as she hurried over to the wide open tomb. One look inside confirmed her worst fears. There were all the burial clothes, but somebody had taken the body. She ran back to tell Peter, and he and John ran off to see for themselves. But she was just too spent to go with them. Too much grief, too much tension. And now this, it sapped the energy right out of her. Summoning her remaining strength, she headed back again. And rounding the bend again, she met Peter and John heading back. Peter just looked at her and sadly shook his head. He couldn't say a word, but the look on his face told the whole story. All she could do was slump down against the cold, hard stone of the tomb and weep. Finally, the gut-wrenching sobs that she had been holding in while she was with the others came in wave after wave after wave. She didn't have to put on a brave face anymore. She was all alone. She was all alone. Perhaps that phrase described her situation better than any other. She was all alone. Then, a strange thing happened. The cold, 
stone of the tomb felt warm. How could this be? The sun wasn't even up. And as she looked, the opening of the tomb seemed to glow. Curious as to what was happening now, Mary crept to the tomb and looked inside, and there it was, an angel. No, it was two angels sitting where the body of Jesus had been. Woman, why are you weeping? They seemed to ask without really talking. They've taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have laid him she said, not knowing if she was really talking to angels or not. Just then she heard someone coming up the path, whistling as they walked. It's the caretaker, she thought. He'll know where Jesus is. As she turned toward him, the sun suddenly broke through, lighting him from behind and causing her to squint. Please, sir, she began to say, but suddenly she was overwhelmed with grief and couldn't utter a word. All she could do was sob. Hey lady, what's the matter? The caretaker said. Why are you crying? Finally she found her voice. Oh please sir, tell me where you have laid the body and I'll take care of things. The man simply said, Mary. And immediately she knew it was Jesus. It was Jesus, and he was alive. She couldn't believe it. All she could do was stammer out, Teacher! <laughs> and once again, the tears flowed. But this time they were tears of overwhelming joy. Then he sent her on her way to tell the disciples the news that he was alive and was going to the Father. That's the thing about this story. It's not until Jesus calls her by name that Mary recognizes the risen Lord. In the blink of an eye, she is transported from the darkness of grief to the joy of the risen Christ because she knows him in relationship. Relationship, that's what this whole endeavor has been about from Bethlehem to the tomb. Relationship. That's what God wanted in the first place. Relationship. And so God sent Jesus to tell and ultimately to show that God's very nature is love and that God is a God of relationship. God is not some vengeful beast that must be appeased through fear and sacrifice. God is love and wants to be in harmony and relationship with all of creation. That's what Jesus came to tell. That's what humanity couldn't hear, couldn't comprehend. And that's what God's love was strong enough to overcome. And how do we treat this love? What is our response to this invitation to relationship? It seems like every day we hear more and more stories of hatred and violence. It's there all around us. So much violence, so much hate, so much anger, so much intolerance. The very same things that put Jesus on a cross 2,000 years ago because people couldn't understand God's love then any more than people can understand it now. But we know differently. We who gather here on the patio or at home 
know that the story doesn't end on the cross. It doesn't end in a sealed tomb. It goes on and on and on. Just as the resurrected Jesus burst forth to bring new life and God's love to the world in a different way. And it has been that same love and relationship that has supported us this past year. Throughout this time of pandemic, this year of Lent, if you will, we have been upheld by God's steadfast, never-ending love. And this love will continue to support us in the days and weeks to come. For it is relationship. Relationship with God and relationship with one another that is the key. It is relationship that we have missed so desperately over the past year. And it is the resurrection of relationship that we are beginning to experience again. And it is in relationship with one another and with God that we will journey together into the new dawn of Jesus' resurrection to explore our call to be St. Columba's in the new coming normal. Once Mary recovered from the shock of finding Jesus alive, he gave her a job. She is sent to go and tell. And so she did. And as a result in the Orthodox Church, Mary Magdalene is known as the Apostle to the Apostles. But it wasn't easy. The disciples wouldn't believe her. It was too much, too impossible to be true. And it was not until Jesus stood among them that night that they would believe. We too are sent to go and tell. We are to go and tell everyone that Jesus is alive and better than ever. And that the God of love who made you and loves you just the way you are wants to be in relationship with you. It won't be easy. People won't believe us either. It's too much. It's too impossible to be true. How could God want a relationship with me? But it is true. And it's our message to share. And that's the good news of Easter, not the bunnies and the flowers and the fancy feast. It's that God loves us this much and continues to love us over and over and over again until we follow that longing, the longing that leads us to relationship with God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son called Mary Magdalene to be a witness of his resurrection, grant that we who have been raised with him may have the courage to answer when he calls us each by name that we may boldly share the good news of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed as found printed in your bulletin.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Jesus, risen Lord, open to us the gate of glory. Holy and everlasting God, we give you thanks for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. In him, light triumphs over darkness. Life triumphs over death. In him is our hope and the promise of life eternal. We pray for all who preach the gospel, for all who seek to lead others to the risen Lord, for all who teach of his forgiveness, for all who have their hope set on eternal life, that we all may rejoice in the power of the risen Lord. Jesus, risen Lord, open to us the gate of glory. We look for the coming of peace on earth. Lord, let us hear that voice which says, Peace be with you. Let your peace grow in our communities. Let your peace reach out into the whole world. Jesus, risen Lord, open to us the gate of glory. As the risen Lord appeared in the upper room, may he be known to be in our homes and among us. Lord, destroy all that would lock us in or deny us freedom. Enter our lives that we may live for you. Jesus, risen Lord, open, open to us the gate of glory. We think of all those who weep today, those newly separated from loved ones, all who are caught up in sorrow and are heavy hearted, all who are distressed and overwrought. We remember all who mourn the loss of a loved one, Lord, wipe away all tears from their eyes, that they may see you and know life is eternal. Jesus, risen Lord, open, open to, to us, us the gate, gate of Lord. glory. We give you thanks and praise for the gift of eternal life. We rejoice with your saints in glory, and we pray for all our loved ones departed this life, that free from sorrow and pain, they may be one with you in your kingdom. Jesus, risen Lord, open to us the gate of glory. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the church, for our bishops Justin, Michael, John, and Diane, for St. Columba's The Threshold Project, our Children's Learning Center, our Project Hope Food Ministries, and our clergy and staff. 
and we pray for those with immediate needs, including Ted, Vicki, Jerry, Gail, Pedro, Jackie, Ann, John, Marilyn, Sandy, Maggie, Nazar, Timmy, Sandy, Denise, Lynn, Ron, Therese, Dana, Carrie, Robbie, Wendy, Carol, Michelle, Guy, Rob, Bill, Richard, Donna, Dick, Amy, Judy, Ron, Lisa, Mary, Linda, Linda, Savannah, Araceli, Augustine, Lauren, Mona, John, Elise, Stephen, Terry, Val, Joyce, Ronald, Clark, Danny, Richard, Aaron, and Ken. And those who need our continuing prayers, whose names are printed in your bulletin. We give thanks for all members of our St. Columbus Parish family, and we pray that our worship life may return to normal. We pray for the world, for all who are suffering or who have died because of the coronavirus pandemic, for all victims of violence, and to turn the hearts of those who would do harm. For those affected by natural disasters, especially wildfires. For peace in the Middle East and all troubled areas of the world. For all those serving at home and abroad, Liam, Simon, Ed, Matthew, Matt, Nathan, Jonah, David, Noah, Garrett, DeLondon, and Marty. You may offer your own prayers and petitions at this time. Blessed be the risen Lord. He has broken from the tomb and opens for us the gate to life eternal. Blessed be the risen Lord. He comes to his disciples. Where two or three gather together, he is there. Blessed be the risen Lord. He comes to from the dead with life. He brings us light and joy and hope. Blessed be the risen Lord. Alleluia. Amen. And now, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Remaining seated, please greet those around you with a nod or a wave. Hi. Are you getting married next month? 33 days. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I know. Ooh, how exciting. I know. It's stress is building up. And mama. Yeah, 33 days. And now let us walk in love oh. as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
this continues with the Eucharistic prayer as found printed in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit his own first gift for those who believe, to, com to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink, do this for the remembrance.
Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Columba and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. together with our friends who are not able to be with us today, the prayer of spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. 
Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord of the empty tomb, the conqueror of gloom, come to you. The Lord in the garden walking, the Lord to Mary talking, come to you. The Lord in the upper room, dispelling fear and doom, come to you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And please remember to resist the temptation to rush up and greet one another. That day will come, but keep your distance for the time being. Remember, and remember those six feet are your friends. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today. No, it's three. That's what I thought.
much risk of kicking it. I've kicked yeah. it a number of times. I did, yeah, I did it once. And then I had it, when we had it this way, I was like, oh, okay. But it's, I mean, it's okay. I've done that. I did it just a couple of weeks ago. But, uh, and it's still no guarantee. We're not professionals, but we do a great job.